Let's go check out what's going on in the big greenhouse. Water culture beds got some good growth going on. Cabbages are starting to head up pretty good. Got a little bit of munching going on. The celery, it's so packed in here that it's basically blanching itself. Got some good stalks on these. Some nice broccoli heads going on here. This is fawn one. Got squash on the left side. Line I'm breeding. It's a yellow squash. On the right side, I got some various things: peppers and cherry tomatoes, and sweet potatoes. Also, let me show you. This is a pepper of mine, a cross. And uh, this generation, I've got several siblings, and they're growing differently. I'm probably going to keep a couple of them. There's a sibling. It's growing a little differently. Vertical. Got cherry tomato here, cherry tomato there, and a couple on the end. This is one sweet potato bucket that I've got growing between the cherry tomatoes. It's growing down here and uh, growing very well. This is a tan with yellow flesh. And this one is so dense you can't even hardly see in there. But this one is the one I grew before. It's a red white flesh one. And uh, these are the vines that I saved from cutting off last year. Doing the tomato wrapping thing on several of these cherries. As you can see the fruit is ripening. These are my squash. I'll just kind of go through these real quick. So you can kind of see where they're at. I got some there maturing, like you can see there. And I need to make a selection, but I haven't quite decided which one to use, which one or two plants I want to carry forward yet. In the center here, it's kind of hard to tell, but I've got some squash growing vertically. This is a squash I call Christmas. It's kind of a uh, pretty cool little squash. This is um, the striped ball from last year line I think it was three so if you want to see the parent of these you can go back and look at that video line three from 2016 fawn two is a mixture of almost completely potatoes on the right hand side I took one bucket out and did a reveal and in the middle I've got uh, the F2 generation of of uh, tomato I'm trying a red tomato I'm trying to grow and I've also got my succeed HT and uh, there's a so I think it's the fifth or sixth generation of that also, the first pot here is a carrot experiment I'm growing in tubes I'll show you that uh, the outcome of that later on and these I've got rooster whites I believe I call them rooster whites I actually don't know if they came from the roosters I think they did these right here are Red Norland. This is a um, the same seed potatoes they got from the market that I pulled the first potato reel reveal from a, a week or so ago. And you can see it's got some issues, but it's still growing, and I hope it produces a little better. These are the roosters, and it's it's a really tough plant. It's really very, you know, like. These are very soft. You, know, you can break them, but not these. These are tough. So I'm kind of curious what's going on underneath there. Uh, this pepper is a mariachi um, F2 selection. Well, it was F2 before. And I wanted to get a line that was very similar to the mariachi pepper, but I wanted it to be open pollinated and I wanted it to be not as spicy. That mari mariachi pepper was at least as hot as a hot jalapeno and uh, I think I might have succeeded with this one this one's extremely mild which is what I'm looking for I don't really care for the really hot hot peppers but it's pretty planned isn't it 
lots of pretty ones. I can't wait for it to turn. I'm curious how it's going to turn to ripeness. This is another breeding. This is a, a line that I'm trying to develop into a, like a pepperoncini type pepper. We'll see how this one goes. This one is Bella. Next to it, it's a very small bell pepper. It ripens red pretty quickly. Um, so it's it's smaller right now, but that's where that's at with that pepper. Uh, another cherry tomato here. I think that one's Sun Gold. Um, a sister line pepper to the one I showed you on Fawn One. I'm not liking this one very much. It's too tall, even though I'd cut it back there. This is Malabar, uh, red Malabar. And um, it's, I uh, got seed from a friend, a fellow YouTuber, and uh, it's looking pretty good. I grew green before, and I just didn't care for the taste, so I'm giving the red a try. I've got a melon here. This is an Ambrosia grow out. I think this is the third generation of it. And I'm trying to um, do the circling technique, the wrapping technique with melons. And my intent is to put a slat of wood or something on the fruit if it develops. This is a cross of mine. I don't think I'm going to continue. It's a zucchini cross. It's just not prolific enough for my taste. And another sister pepper. To the one that I showed you on Fawn One, it, it just is not doing what I like. It's kind of doing like that one right next to it, the one I just talked about. I'm probably not going to continue that one either. Fawn Three, let me show you what's going on here. I've got a red okra that my uncle Don had given me, and I'm curious to see how it's going to grow out. So I'm growing a couple plants in there. This is another, uh, this his, my Uncle Don's melon. I think it's a canary melon. He says it's yellow. It's from Guatemala. He says it's very, very sweet. But I don't know for sure until it grows out. So I'll carry you along. I got a butternut. This is a butternut uh, squash I'm working on. Well, it's one of the parents of the butternut squashes I'm working on. And I'm going to develop a butternut of my own. Um couple of those older cabbages that I cut out before from the smaller cabbage harvest. It's a smaller type cabbage. And uh, these are two that are coming along. They're not quite there yet, but um, we're in that soon. And these are carrots. These are sister pots to the carrot reveal that I did. I've got two here. Got uh, some Brussels sprouts. I topped this one off. I wanted to see if it would mature the um, Brussels sprouts like you see in there and so far I've got mixed feelings on that in the center here are another tomato line I'm developing and uh, it's a red tomato as well you can see that I've got a cross right here that one and I've got a couple crosses here and here and these are parent lines that have been crossed with other lines. Okay, on this side I've got a Sweet Success Cucumber. It's a first time cucumber I've grown and it looks promising so far. In fact, let me carry you quickly back to Fawn One. I forgot to mention this. This is a Sweet Success Cucumber that I pollinated when this was in the small greenhouse. And this has been this size for well over a month. I'm waiting for it to get soft and what I'm, why I did this is because this is a Parthenocarpic Cucumber Sweet Success or uh, is it Sweet Success? Success. It's either Sweet Success or Success. Anyway, um, so yeah, I had uh, pollinated this one because the first few flowers were male but ever since it's put on nothing but females. As you can see there I got one coming on there and there. Nothing but females and Parthenocarpic uh, means it's gynaceous Parthenocarpic which means they produce all females and um, Parthenocarpic means they don't need to be pollinated by anything by man, by hand or uh, wind or anything. They grow on their own. Uh, so 
what I'm doing here is I'm going to cut this off whenever I feel that the seeds are fully fully mature because it's selfed with the very first couple flowers here and I'm attempting to grow out parthenocarpic seed to see if I get the same plant. The rest on fawn 3 are various squashes that I'm breeding uh, potential crosses and things like that so I'm, I'm looking at characteristics in the breeding there. A lot of this year is nothing but breeding. Uh, well not nothing but a lot of breeding. Uh, some more as you can see a little string and stuff like this that means that I'm breeding them. Um, and these are various types of um, tomatoes including a curiosity for a tomato called Big Zack. I just wanted to see how big of a tomato I could grow so I've got Big Zack going there. Down the very end down there is a, a butternut, one of the parent, parental lines that I'm going to try to cross. Over here is a cross. I've got my tomato Heg German slash Campari on this one. And uh, you can see the fruit on that one's starting to grow out. And I like the uniformity of this one so far. So I've got three or four pots right here that uh, last year they were very tasty so I saved the seeds from and they're pretty consistent this year and this will be the it was a F3 or F4 Campari times a Heg German pink which is a beef steak so the genes were not set yet and I crossed it with a Heg so this is at the F2 or F3 F2 or F3 generation of that so I have to carry this plant out for another three or four generations before it's complete so that's part of the breeding stuff that I'm doing. Um, just some more tomato plants I'm working on. And a butternut. And um, anyway, I like the characteristics of it. So it's one of the parental lines of what I'm doing. For those that are just tuning in, I've got five 55-gallon drums up here. So about 250 gallons. This tank down here is my distribution tank. It carries. It's got a pump in here. It's constantly aerated. And it carries, um, it's got a thousand gallon per hour pump and it carries uh, nutrient to all this fawn system here. Then there's a drain pipe that drains back into this, this one. And it's also got another um, pump in it. And what I can do with this one is I can either pump it back into this tank here where it becomes basically a recirculating type system or I can pump it out to anywhere outside that I want to and if I pump it out to anywhere else it then becomes a flow to waste system. Underneath the benches here I've got two 55 gallon drums and these have super concentrated blends of hydroponic nutrient. The one on the right is master blend mixed with Epsom salt and it's I put generally about 500 to a thousand gallon uh, concentration in each one of these 55 gallons and this one is calcium nitrate only and the reason why I separate them is because if you add super concentrated nutrient calcium nitrate to the um, the master blend and Epsom salt it'll cause it a lot of crystals to fall out and makes remixing a little tougher so doing it separate like this allows me to I have a pump in each one of these it pumps directly into the di distribution tank after every watering and the barrels up there uh, gravity feed back this here and I've got it set on a timer so the timer pumps the right amount of nutrient to there and I, I've got it fixed where it's always about um, 800 well between 750 and 900 ppms and that's what I like growing in everything in whenever it's this warm um, spring and summer because uh, too much concentrate and you get uh, a whole lot of issues it's greener things look better but it doesn't produce nearly as well as you can see from everything in the greenhouse here I just saw you walk you down it seems to be working fine that's pretty much it for this video guys got a lot of stuff growing on it's close quarters a lot of vertical gardening um, hydroponic growing in rice holes mostly um, aged rice holes right now which is underneath here and um, 
Then I top it off with some parboiled rice holes as a mulch. Keeps everything nice and moist in here, but not too wet. So uh, really enjoying that. Um, I did go with peat mixture with parboiled rice holes, this lighter stuff, in the small greenhouse. And I'm going to see, test that how it grows. I'm pretty sure it'll grow great because I've grown in peat mixes before. That's pretty much it. That's enough for this greenhouse video. The video is probably already pretty long. This is Brent, you guys. We'll see you later.